Welcome to my review of Spectre Camera. Now Spectre Camera is Apple's 2019 iPhone app of the year and it's piqued in my interest because <laughs> as the name suggests it is a camera app and it's a long exposure camera app no less. It advertises brilliant long exposures so let's see if it's true. It promises the usual long exposure subjects, things like motion blur and light trails, rivers of light no less. But it also promises a couple of things that I've not seen before. The first one is that it advertises that it can make people disappear, it can make crowds disappear. So that's quite interesting. The second one is that you can use it handheld without a tripod. So if you've watched any of my videos on creating long exposures, you'll always see me using a tripod and you'll you'll see me explaining why keeping your phone perfectly still is so important in creating effective long exposures. So for Spectre Camera to promise that you can leave your tripod at home and take your long exposures handheld, that's quite intriguing. They say it uses the phone's built-in accelerometer and on iPhones 8 and newer, it also uses like some AI wizardry. So let's see if that works. The second promise, wait, that was the second promise. So about two weeks ago, I dropped two pounds and 99 pence on Spectre camera and I've been testing it out in a variety of situations just trying to see if it lives up to its promises so promise number one motion blur promise number two is light trails rivers of light promise number three is it, it can make crowds disappear and promise number four is its wonderful handheld feature so promise number one of motion blur did it live up to its promise can spectre camera produce high quality motion blur. I mean, this is this is Apple's app of the year for 2019. So I went in expecting this thing to be at least half decent. And with motion blur, to be honest, it absolutely nails it. I tested it out in a variety of different situations. I did the usual long exposure waterfalls. I took long exposures of trains. I took uh, river. And in all of those tests, it did exactly what I wanted it to do, which was render the motion nice and smooth, but it also kept the still parts of the image looking really, really sharp. And that contrast between moving and not moving is really, really important in creating effective long exposures. And Spectre Camera did it really, really well. I can put my Spectre Camera photos next to my slow shutter cam photos and I literally can't tell the difference. I have to keep going into the metadata on the photos to see which camera took the photo. So promise number one for motion blur, yes, a big tip. However, I personally would like a little bit more control. So the first thing you'll notice about Spectre Camera is how simple its UI is, the user interface. It doesn't have much in the way of settings or menus or controls or anything like that. There's just a few buttons. And part of that simplicity is it doesn't give you that many shutter speeds to choose from. You have three seconds, you have five seconds, and you have nine seconds. Nine seconds. And that's great for, I would say, like 85% of situations where you're gonna be taking long exposures. Those, that range is great. However, there are certain times where I find myself wanting a faster shutter speed and a much longer shutter speed. So that situation was these trains here. Now these trains were moving so fast that three seconds was just too long to capture the train. One second or half a second would have been much better exposure options because as you can see, the trains just disappear. The only time I could get nice long exposures of the trains was when they were just pulling away from the station and they were crawling along. Then the three second exposure time was okay. And where I needed a longer shutter speed was when I was waiting for the trains to come, I wanted to get a long exposure of the clouds moving across the sky. Nine seconds just wasn't anywhere near long enough for me to capture the movement of the clouds across the sky. I had to switch over 
to slow shutter cam and choose a minute long exposure. So next we have another long exposure fan favorite which is light trails. Light trails are a funny one on any long exposure app because they work by taking pictures in very, very rapid succession and stitching them together to produce one final image. And when you're taking pictures of moving subjects with lights, you can actually see the individual pictures. It looks like splodges or dots moving across the screen. I call it the Morse code effect. You can see dot, 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 or dash, dash, dash moving across the screen. Now Spectre Camera promises that it can produce like rivers of light and with this Morse code effect you just don't get that. And that is prevalent with slow shutter cam as well because it works in the same way. And you can see here in the examples that Spectre Camera has like duplicated the part of the image that's supposed to be still. And slow shutter cam never did this even though they do work in the exact same way. In conclusion with the light trails I would never use Spectre camera for light trails. Um, I wouldn't use slow shutter cam for light trails to be honest. Instead I would use an app that offered manual controls and I would create my long exposure that way. It's a lot more work and it's a lot more effort but the result for me is worth it. I would rather have that smooth river of light with a lot more work than the Morse code effect instantly with one of these apps. So as for the promise of light trails, rivers of light, it doesn't deliver. So making crowds disappear. Can it make crowds disappear? Well, making crowds disappear, yes, kind of. Um, if people are walking quite quickly across the scene and they're not wearing clothes that stand out too much from the background. So people in high visibility jackets don't disappear 100% sometimes. Um, people who are standing still they either remain frozen and sharp or they just turn a bit blurry if they're just kind of moving slowly so yes and no it's kind of weird to advertise it as a headline feature and I'll tell you why exactly it's advertised as a headline feature in just a moment when I jump ahead a little bit to promise number four which is handheld so these last two they go hand in hand handheld and making crowds disappear are two features that are aimed directly at this app's target market and the target market for this app is people who have very very little interest in the process of photography how it works, uh, putting effort into their pictures, which is fine. They're the type of person who wants the iPhone, who wants the camera app to do all of the work. They're not interested in doing any work themselves. They're gonna buy Spectre camera because they want point and shoot long exposures. They don't wanna be setting up a tripod. They don't wanna be experimenting with different shutter speeds, different settings. They don't want to be diving into menus. They just want to take out their phone, point it, keep the phone held still and press the button and they want the result. And that's fine. That's that's the market for this app. That's why making crowds disappear. That is something that that market wants. Someone like me, I see that headline feature make crowds disappear. And I think that's kind of strange to mention that. This app's target market sees that headline feature make crowds disappear and they think that's amazing. So that's fine. Um, but can it actually do it? Mm, kind of. Which moves me on to promise number four, which is handheld. If anyone's actually ever tried to keep a camera still for any actual length of time, longer than a few tenths of a second, when you think you're keeping it really still and you see the result, you're like, wow, I was not still whatsoever. This app is actually quite remarkable. I don't know if other apps offer this feature. I don't know how this app's handheld feature compares to other apps if they offer it. Does Spectre Camera allow you to create a type of point and shoot long exposures that its target market wants? Kind of. Yes and no. In good light, when you're doing motion blur, yes, it absolutely nails it. I have an iPhone XR, I can't speak for, oh, hello, <laughs> just announcing itself there. I have an iPhone XR and I can't speak for other people with different iPhones, um, older iPhones especially, 
because apparently older iPhones don't get the AI stabilization, they just get the built-in accelerometer. So your results may vary, but for me, on my iPhone XR, and over years of photography, I, I know how to hold my camera to keep it steady as well. Um, like if you're holding it out here with, with one hand, it might not work. In fact, I should have done that, shouldn't I? I should have held the phone out here to see if it can do it. Um, it's a bit late now, my review is complete. But if you actually go to the effort of keeping it really, really still, like keep your hands close in to your body, I take a deep breath, maybe lean up against something as well. Like, yeah, you can absolutely achieve a handheld long exposure. You can see two examples here. One was podded, uh, I used a tripod, and one was handheld. And you absolutely cannot tell the difference between the two. At night though, I didn't get a single usable image. And with doing all my techniques of keeping the phone as still as possible, I didn't get a single usable image. Um, so I'm gonna say that it can half do it. If I was the app developer, I would put like a little asterisk saying the handheld for light trails is still in beta because it doesn't work. So in conclusion, would I recommend Spectre Camera to its target market? If someone had no interest in photography, like I said before, they want the app to do all the work. The thing is, I don't think the people who would buy this app are going to get the type of pictures that they see advertised. See, when you search long exposures on Google and all the results that come up, you know, the, the spectacular long exposures, this app's target market doesn't realize the other work that actually goes into long exposures as well, such as planning the shots, um, choosing a time of day when you have good lighting, uh, effective composition, all those sort of things go into creating a good long exposure as well and Spectre Camera absolutely cannot help you <laughs> with composition and things like that. So what this app's target market enjoy it? Um, maybe. It's hard to say, I'm not this app's target market. As a more experienced photographer, I was wondering where all the settings are. I didn't want the phone to do any of the work. Um, I want to do the work. I don't want people to see my pictures. And it's actually already started to happen. When I tell people that my long exposures were created with my iPhone, they say, oh wow, yeah, isn't it amazing what you can do with apps these days? And I'm like, you're completely missing the point. There's far more to it than just the app you use. And I think that the app's target market don't realize that. I think they're gonna be quite disappointed when they just stand there and point and shoot and their pictures don't look like the advertisements. If someone wants to learn photography and they want to dabble with phone long exposures and they're willing to use a tripod and invest some time in learning about composition and setting up the tripod and trying out different angles. Yes, a Spectre camera is absolutely for that person. But I would say in about three weeks or a month's time, as that person learns and grows as a photographer and they start getting more creative and needing more settings, I think they might find themselves wanting more. So for that reason, unfortunately, I cannot recommend Spectre Camera. I'm going to delete it from my phone and I'm going to continue using a slow shutter cam. So that was my review for Spectre Camera. Have you used Spectre Camera? Do you enjoy it? Have you tried any alternatives? I love talking about photography. Anyone mentions photography or has any questions about photography or any photography ideas, then I would love to get into a discussion with you. So thanks for watching. Shipa Korand.